Dr. Mindy here, and on this video, we're gonna talk about the foods that are gonna make fasting so incredibly difficult. So when you are eating, you wanna avoid these foods so that when you're fasting, you can get more out of your fasting lifestyle. So, and as always, if you're new to my channel, welcome, hit the subscribe button, the notification button. I come live to answer your questions every week. I'm putting out new videos for you every week. And once a month, we fast together during fast training week. It's a five day period where we fast together as a community. That's what this video is a part of, is the 36 hour fast. I'm showing you guys how to fast this week in longer extended fasts, and it's pivotal that you understand foods that make fasting hard. And thank you to those of you that share my videos out. We are gonna change the world through fasting. We are gonna get a million people here this year so that we can end chronic disease and end the suffering that so many people are experiencing. So again, thank you, appreciate you guys. Okay, are you ready? The foods that make fasting hard. So let's start with the first thing. I've got one, two, three, four categories of foods. So bear with me as I go through this with you. The first is anything that put your blood sugar on a roller coaster ride. So these are your refined flours, your refined sugars, which are your cakes, your cookies, your pastas, your breads that what happens is those foods, when something is highly processed and highly refined, what it does is it will spike your blood sugar, give you a high, and then your blood sugar will go to a low. And as high as your blood sugar goes is as low as your blood sugar goes, and in that low is where you are going to get hungry, hungry, hungry. So we've got to get you off this roller coaster ride. So if you're serious about going into these longer fasts, these foods have to go away. It will make fasting more difficult. Okay, second thing you're gonna wanna avoid is any food that makes you insulin resistant. Well, the foods I just mentioned is one. The second thing I want you to look at are your oils. So we've talked about this. I'm gonna keep talking about it because the standard American diet is packed with bad oils that are causing you to be insulin resistant. These are your canola oils, your, your cottonseed oil, your corn oil, your partially hydrogenated sunflower, safflower, vegetables, soybean, freaking every oil out there that you pretty much can find is a bad oil. So get to know your oils, get the bad ones out and get bring in the good ones. The other piece that will make you insulin resistant are your fake ingredients. So on my last video, I am used this as a great example. The first three ingredients are all there spiking your blood sugar. They are the refined flours, whole grain corn, sugar, and rice flour and corn syrup. The first four ingredients totally go against the first thing you're supposed to avoid to fast. The second set of ingredients go against what makes you insulin resistant. They are the bad oils, canola oil, sunflower oil. Then we go down into the fake ingredients. Anything that says artificial, even natural flavorings, that is, those are fake ingredients, artificial colorings. Red dye number 40, yellow dye number six, blue dye number one, color added, citric acid, malic acid, these are chemicals. They are making you overweight and they are destroying your health. They are what is gonna make fasting difficult. So please get out the fake ingredients. The other thing that will make you uh, insulin resistant is no fiber. Okay, let's see how much fiber is in these tricks. Let me see if they even list it in here. Oh, dietary fiber, here we go. Of the 33 grams of carbohydrates in this particular cereal, we have one gram of fiber. So one of the biggest challenges we have is we are not eating enough fiber. So when you're eating highly processed foods, you're not getting enough fiber and that's gonna make fasting harder. And then always your highly processed foods, which again, comes in these standard American diet junk. Okay, now, Third category, this one might surprise you, your artificial sugars. So this is your NutraSweet, your Aspartame, your Splenda, your Sucralose, your Sweet and Low, your Nutame, your Adventame, and your Sweet One. Those of you 
that have been dieting with diet drinks, that have been looking for products that don't have sugar, but they have artificial sweeteners in them, those are making you insulin resistant and will put make it very difficult for you to fast. So please get those chemical laden sugars out. The fourth category, and this one just is where I like, I just want to put my head down and cry, is your obesogens. So these are the ones where I get so frustrated because people are gaining weight and they don't understand why they're gaining weight. And it's because they're eating these chemicals or being exposed to these chemicals. The number one obesogen are phthalates. I just interviewed Dr. Swana Swan on uh, Shauna Swan on my podcast, the Resetter podcast. She wrote a book called Countdown. Looks like this, and it's all about how our uh, testosterone levels are going down, sperm counts are going down because of phthalates. You're also gaining weight because of phthalates. And so, where are phthalates? They are in your colognes, they're in your perfumes, they're in your air fresheners, they're in your car fresheners. All the fragrances are packed with phthalates. Second category of obesogen you're gonna wanna get out are your BPA plastics. So these are your plastic water bottles. Think about this for a moment, that plastic water bottle that you let sit in your car and heat up in your car, all those BPA plastics are going in there. You pick up your, your bottle of water after it's been heated up, and now you're drinking that, that plastic is going into you and making you gain weight, making you insulin resistant, and making it difficult for you to fast. Get the plastics out, go to glass. We gotta stop the plastic world. Third obesogen is something called atrazine. Atrazine is a weed killer for crops. And it's banned in Europe, so thank you, Europe. I wish America would, would be a lot smarter with what we allow, chemicals we allow here. But atrazine is in anything that is not organic. So it's sprayed, I'm sure this has atrazine in it. Anything that doesn't say organic on it has the potential for atrazine to be sprayed on it. It is a weed controller for crops. And then the last one, and this one is just, ah, it's so frustrating. It's called organotins. And organotins you can find in adhesives, so you're gonna smell it in. There's plastics, and you're gonna find it in marine water. So these are your shellfish, your, your lobster, your shrimp, your mollusks, your scallops, that are all on the bottom of the ocean taking in these organotins. I, I found a study that showed that when you are exposed to these organotins, the first trimester in the womb, it actually increases your number of fat cells. This is not okay. These chemicals need to get out of our environment. And as you learn to fast, as you learn to drop weight, let's vote with our dollars and stop buying this stuff. Go back to what nature provided us. Go back to Whole Foods. That's how we can use fasting and, and pair fasting to our lifestyle so that we get the ultimate result with health that we're looking for. So again, let me know if that's helpful. I just rambled off a bunch of different chemicals that you might be like, whoa, your eyes are rolling back in the back of your head, but we've got to bring this stuff to the surface. As always, if you want the companion guide for Fast Training Week, put companion guide in there. And if you wanna join me in my next Fat Burner Reset, let me and my team guide you through a 15 day experience. We're starting one up soon, so just put Fat Burner Reset in the comments and tell me your fasting story in the comments. I wanna hear your wins. We are gonna change health through fasting because this is not okay. Hope that helps.